Um, well, I started early. I was five and a half and I started with uh, judo. After that, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, and so on. So, Thai boxing, MMA. Just like a natural, like a, I call it a natural evolution in a way. I first got into kickboxing when I was in my early 20s. I got into it because I used to love all the old martial arts films. All, um, Bruce Lee, Jean Claude Van Damme, all them, Steven Seagal. Jean Claude Van Damme's probably one of the best for his kicks, and I wanted to get into that. I actually loved them. So I got into it and um, just took off from there. Uh, I loved sparring, fighting fitness, being as fit as I could be, and I wanted to be the best, so I used to train like mad to be as good as I could be. Basically, um, if you go back in history, Pancras or Pancration was one of the first, uh, on, on one of the first Olympic Games, so basically MMA as, as it is now, nearly, was already existent, punches, kicks, submissions, wrestling. Later when the, see, now I can actually tell you the history, when the Romans actually conquered Greece and the surrounding countries, they basically, they thought it was barbaric, that's why they treated Greco Roman wrestling, and actually Pancras stopped existing in, in, in the then um, Olympic Games. Until then, it, it was there, you know, so. I always say Wikipedia, type in, history of Pancras, Pancration or MMA and then you'll find out. I mean obviously modern MMA, 1990 I think two it was, uh, with UFC, the Gracie starting it, anyone challenging anyone, and you know, we saw a lot of different inputs. MMA gives you opportunity for people from all different backgrounds of combat sports to come together and actually compete and see not what styles are best so much anymore because everyone trains every style really. But See, it's, it's the ultimate form of, of combat sport, just because you've got so many weapons at your exposure, so many ways to win, so many ways to lose, and it's just, it's just exciting because of that nature. It's, it's a total mix, everyone can get in and get involved. It's not one set style that you have to learn to fight under, and a lot of people from the street get more involved in it. Yes, they have to start to learn the skills, um, but they don't have to be such a skillful stand-up as if they were doing Thai boxing. They can be semi-skilled on the stand-up and they've got to learn the ground fighting. So it is, it is, it lets more people from all different environments, all different martial arts, every background get involved in the It's a lot of training, really, a lot of different gyms. You know, everyone does the normal cardio and cardio muscular and vascular endurance as well as uh, you know, the stamina and the technique, the punches, the sparring. Some gyms do have an emphasis more on wrestling, on submission, some have. Uh, really for an MMA fighter you have to be complete. Uh, we see now uh, recently like with people doing front kicks from karate, front kicks to the face, like so-called Mike Gary, uh, knocking people out, so basically back to basics in a way a little bit. Uh, you use everything that works for you and that's kind of like my motto, just train hard and Again, be first. Uh, training, uh, try and get up well. For instance, now I've got a fight on the 26th of February, so I get up in the morning. Um, I try and do do about a 45-minute run, um, and I try and keep my diet quite clean. So you need enough carbs to uh, give you a bit of energy, but you don't want to walk around with a belly on you. And then uh, come down to training, and uh, about two hours in right here, maybe five, six times a week, and I try and get some weights in as well. To be honest, for most fighters, it's, it's uh, work. For most lads work because there's not a lot of money in the sport at, at, at pro level in Britain anyway. Um, so until, until lads have got, got big sponsorships and stuff like that, a lot of lads work during the day or work sort of part-time jobs and then sort of training around it. So we get up in the morning, might train early in the morning before work, go to work all day, and then come home and train again. Um, some lads even managed to squeeze in three sessions around work. It's, 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 it's quite a tough sort of grind for a lot of lads, but um, obviously once they make it to the UFC and things like that, then it sort of changes a lot. Um, when I was fighting, I was just totally fixated on training. I was training six days a week. Most of the time I was in Thai boxing in the evening. I was going to the gym. I was street running. So it's just training like mad. I try not to tell people that I'm a fighter, um, to be honest, because you 
do it, especially in MMA, there is that stigma of cage fighting being a bit of a barbaric sport and uh, not really sort of something that someone respectable would do. Like, a lot of people have that um, sort of stigmatisation where people think that cage fighting is just two thugs in the cage, they have no skill and they've just been pulled off the street and they're, and they're just fighting. But um, obviously, once I get to know people, then they, they eventually find out anyway. And, I've never really, I don't think I've ever had any, any sort of people, if I have told them sort of early on, there would be any really, really judgment on it, well not to my face anyway. You're both going into the ring, the exact same idea, you're both going to do the same thing, and uh, well, you both got it in your minds, you both want to win, and whether that comes by knockout submission or points, that's it, but there's no animosity there, you know, I don't dislike him, I'm pretty sure he doesn't dislike me, and uh, at the end of it, we'll be friends and have a challenge with him. People choose to do it. It's, it's not barbaric, there's a side of violence to it, but it's in a controlled environment, it can be stopped at any point. It's not like they're fighting in the street, someone's getting beaten to the floor, it can be stopped. Um, certain sports like MMA look a little bit more violent because it can quite often be more blood quicker because it will wear smaller gloves. But at the same time, it's not as bad as going 12 rounds of boxing getting punched in the head all the rounds. So, I don't think it's barbaric, no. The British press um, don't do a lot for MMA at all. I mean, there's a couple of newspapers that support it, support the sport. Um, but the British press really probably do a really bad job of making the MMA look like it's, it's human cockfighting or barbaric sport. So, um, the British public is just, I mean, it's, you know what it's like, people believe what they read in the paper, they believe what they see on TV. Most people that do a martial arts or anyone that's into sports, sort of martial arts wise or anything like that, will realise that what MMA is, but um, it's just going to take time, like anything. In America it's becoming more accepted now and I think eventually in the UK it will, it will be a, a huge sport. I mean, it's growing now and it will be huge soon, but it's just, it's just eventually getting to that point where, um, where people just accept it for what it is. It's exciting. Um, we all, it goes again back, you know, history, gladiators fighting, it's two men in a cage. Cage is always associated with, you know, keeping wild animals or anything really, you know, caged, basically hidden. Um, and it's just, I think people start to appreciate really the hard work. And I believe as well there's a completely new science, uh, or sports science branch open with regards to martial artists and their achievements. There's some stuff, some people, let's say, take a kick to the ribs, which is uh, like a mini truck hitting them, basically they've got no rib broken. So, uh, you know, now scientists started kind of experiment. why is that, so what's going on there? So, you know, it's kind of, it has its benefits. Uh, it's not for everyone, obviously, but then the martial arts are still not in the top with regards to injury. You, you know, you got, if you fall off a bicycle in cycling, on, 80, 60 miles an hour, whatever, you know, that's it. Uh, you know, football, basketball, you hear them, they're non stop. I go professional fighters, they fight 10, 15, 20 fights, no injury whatsoever. Go play football, completely rip this, you know, this broken. And it's just, you know, I think it's one of those things. People basically not educated enough yet. Yeah. I think the best thing about fighting is just probably the, um, the feeling you get when you when you win, to be honest, or even just being in, in the in the cage, it's just it's just a completely different adrenaline level to anything I've really experienced before in my life. And I come from a background of being in the Royal Marines for uh, like six years, so it's, and like going to Afghanistan and stuff like that. But, but fighting, because it's a, such an intense, it's a one-on-one -on -one sort of sport. Um, it's a completely different buzz, and it's the the endorphin and the sort of the. Um, the kick you get your body feels from fighting is unbelievable. Um, I, well, I don't think there's any other sport like it really. To, I mean, you're going in there, you're relying on yourself, there's no other teammates in there. Uh, it be quite a lonely place, but the adrenaline rush and the feeling when you win is just pretty intense. So. Uh, my most memorable moment in, in MMA um, would probably be winning um, my first fight at Bama in September. Um, I won the British title earlier on in the year, but managing to get a uh, good win on a big show like Bama was probably uh, the most memorable moment in the race so far. Uh, well, obviously winning the WBC Muta Intercontinental title, but um, as well, uh, something we have in the Eastern Bloc or used to have before, um, winning um, 
military combat games. Basically, it's thousands of soldiers on one field and everyone fights everyone. And um, I was the last man standing and 27 bones broken later. Six and a half months of treatment and recovery, but I did my country then, Yugoslavia, very proud. I even got 10 days off. <laughs> Um, I do it now for, for fun and because I'm hitting at a decent level and I really enjoy it. I mean, a lot of time it isn't fun when you have to diet a lot and get down to weight. And um, But once you get in there and actually compete, then you realise why you actually are doing the sport. So I wouldn't say I've got any real long term goals, but yeah, I mean, I'm just going to take it as it goes, keep training hard, and you might see my name up there one day.